Chairman Mao, Jamie Howe, Ho Chi Minh, Asif Din, Vaslav Havel, Graham Savel, No Surrender, Percy Fender, Guerrilla Crickets. 1.7 million UK children are estimated to live in a household that does not have access to sufficient food to make up a healthy diet. In the wake of the coronavirus, uh, the numbers expected to get even worse. In fact, a recent September report by the Food Foundation estimated there'll be up to another 300,000 more working age adults uh, food insecure uh, as they transition from uh, furlough or employment to uh, to unemployment. Uh, at Gorilla Cricket, we think this is appalling. It must not happen. So we are working with the Sussex Cricket Foundation to do something about it. And with the warmth and generosity of our global community of followers, we believe that we can. So far, your generosity uh, in supporting our In the Bag appeal has raised £1,118. That is 320 food bags you've provided for people who really need them. It's also 30% of, uh, 31%, I beg your pardon, uh, towards our target of £3,500. It's a fantastic start, but we do need more. But who creates the food bags? What goes into them? Who gets them to the people that need them and how? I am with uh, Joe Glazebrook of the Brighton and Hove Food Foundation, who can answer these questions. Joe, a very warm welcome, and thank you so much for your time today. You are welcome. Um, it's Brighton and Hove Food Partnership. Oh, I beg no, your pardon. It's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. Just going forward. I never like to make a mistake in the first line, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, should I say anything or not? I was like, yeah, just say it. <laughs> if I get it wrong, I, I'm happy that you tell me. So just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, Joe. Who are so, you? <laughs> so who am I? This is a very big question. Um, so I guess I'll tell you about my working life. Mm -hmm. um, so I work at Brighton and Hove Food Partnership. I've been working there for about eight years now um, over a variety of different roles. Um, the Food Partnership have been um, alive since um, 2003 and we do lots of different aspects of work around food all of them kind of encourage people to come together around food in in some way so I guess the sort of whistle stop tour of, of us is that we teach people how to cook we teach people how to grow their own food we um, are very active in encouraging people to compost to think about their own food waste and we also work on a more kind of strategic policy level with large organizations and other projects around food waste food poverty food strategy on a local and a national level um, my most recent role at the Food Partnership has been running a community kitchen, which is our own cookery school based in the centre of Brighton, mm -hmm. which we've had for over two years teaching people how to cook. Um, and they are community, low cost um, or free classes for, um, for members of our community, adults with learning disabilities, adults with dementia, people on low incomes, people with health conditions, um, and also a commercial fundraising aspect to the kitchen um, um, whereby people will come along and do classes that they pay a ticket, uh, pay a price for a ticket with local chefs, different kinds of cuisines, um, and people will all create their own food, learn how to make some dishes, and then they'll sit around our communal dining area and, and eat together. A lot of um, it's really geared towards helping people to understand how to create and then enjoy nutritious food, making it available. But it's 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 education. It's not just putting food where it's needed into hungry mouths and uh, tummies. It's 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 far more than that, right? Absolutely, and it's about a celebration of food. It's around connecting people around food. So people might come along to a class with a partner, a friend, a family member, or they might come along on their own. And then people are, you know, creating food together and sitting and sharing and having conversations. And I think when you're sitting around a dining table with delicious food, if you don't know those people, it's really um, easy to strike up conversations about what you're eating and what you've mm. made, and it becomes, you know, a really lovely sharing experience. Um, but as I'm sure you 
um, have kind of, you know, gathered by now, we had to close the kitchen down, um, well, temporarily close the kitchen down um, at the end of March, um, popped it up open again <laughs> in uh, in September. I, I, yep. Apologies, I really lose track of time over the past year, as so many people have, um, and it's temporarily closed again at the moment just because, um, you know, to because of COVID. Short answer. Okay, so, well, so how did you personally get get involved with the uh, Brighton and Hove Food Partnership? So uh, myself, so I had um, been working in the community voluntary sector for quite a long time, um, all working in mental health and in um, education and, and employment, doing a lot of work with, with volunteers. And I was also studying at the time mm -hmm. um, and I was doing some research. I, I, I had my own allotment then. I don't at the moment, but I had my own allotment and um, was spending a lot of time there. And, you know, there was starting to be a lot of conversations about being outdoors and food growing and well-being. And because I was working in mental health at the, at the time, I um, did a piece of research around food growing and the, the therapeutic benefits of that, a phrase that people are commonly using now is called ecotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, so engaging with, uh, with nature and the natural world as a, as a therapeutic intervention. So I um, had lot, the food partnership had long been on my radar um knowing you know the work that they were doing is there's a quite a sort of close-knit community voluntary sector in brighton and um and i've done this piece of research at the um as part of a master's degree mm -hmm. and um and saw saw um a job going at the food partnership which was around um engaging and encouraging pe more people to get involved in food growing so um <sighs> So I was like, okay, that's mine. <laughs> I'm going to do that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I was lucky enough to get that job. And my, my role has changed a lot while I've been at the Food Partnership. So consequently, I am um, coordinating the emergency food hub here. with um, Which we can see is all go behind you by the looks of it. Is it noisy? Because I can ask Not people at all. To, and it, okay. and even if it is, we don't want to stop them going about right. <laughs> the work that they're doing. So they're, they're more important than us in a way. Mm. Um, so tell us then a little bit about um, how the Brighton and Hope Food Partnership, of which you are a, a key part, um, got involved with the, the Sussex Cricket Foundation. How did those two come together to actually sort of create what you're currently doing yeah so i think um the nature of the food in the food partnership is kind of like a bit of a clue in the in our name is that we engage in partnership work and um you know we're very much into making connections with people um and you might think well what's cricket got to do with food you know um how do those how do those connections get made um i think katie um who is from sussex cricket foundation yeah. got in touch um with vic who is our uh, wonderful director at the food partnership um and saw that we'd been coordinating an emergency food response during covid19 and just kind of said how how can we help um, and that led to two initiatives, one which is called Tea for Two, yeah. and that is matching um, cricket clubs with their local food banks for food donations. And the other um, initiative was the one that we, um, we've been carrying through here at the Food Hub, which is our In the Bag uh, project which is a recipe bag a recipe kit for families with ingredients and a recipe in them um, where they can make something a simple meal or a simple dish over the over the summer holidays so that was how it um that was how it all started really i think the the easiest way for me to describe it is we're all quite sort of familiar with these boxes that you can get through the post mm that has you know all the kit inside and we wanted to recreate something like that that was would give people a meal or something to eat an activity for people to do as a family um, where people might learn something about the food that they were cooking with and also to maybe get people to think oh actually this is an achievable thing that I can do and maybe we've now we've got this recipe we can make this another time um and we try to use recipe uh, ingredients that we are using um, in the food hub. So they're 
they're simple ingredients. They're accessible ingredients. Um, the equipment that you need to make the dishes, um, you know, there's nothing complicated. Um, so well, it should be accessible. So why don't you why don't you tell us a little bit then about a what's in the bag that mm -hmm. uh, goes to mm -hmm. the households, sure. and b um, how does it get to be in the bag in the first place? Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so we have done um, examples of things that we've done might be a spaghetti. So that would be a spaghetti with like tomato sauce, uh, with like a tin of tuna in, with the kind of uh, feeling that if you can make a basic tomato sauce, you can then extend that across lots of different recipes. You could put it with some, some rice, you could add some beans, you could put some different vegetables in there. So that's kind of something that you can adapt in many ways. Um, we have made, um, I think we called it a cup of noodle, so your own kind of pot noodle in, mm. um, in, in a mug. We've made some savoury rice. The one that we have done this week is, this is our bag. Okay. They get sent out in these. We're very keen to make them look really nice. We want them to look special. We want them to people to think, you know, there's some there's some value to this. I'm being given something nice here. So this one this week is stewed apple with instant oats. So this could be a breakfast, it could be a pudding, it could be a snack. So in here we have got oops, we've got three apples. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the, um, we've got a little packet of cinnamon powder. We've got some oats. We've got milk powder that will go in with the oats. And we've got some sugar. So we portion everything out for people. Then the recipe will also go inside the bag. The recipe will kind of tell you... It's quite hard to see in the light, yeah, but, but the recipe will tell you exactly the equipment that you need so people can get all the equipment out that's ready mm -hmm. and that they need. It will tell you the ingredients and then the method stage by stage. Um, and along with this one, there is... A picture of an apple. Like a, yeah, a picture of an apple, like a cross section of an apple that yeah. can be coloured in and it asks uh, people to identify the stem, the leaf, the skin, the flesh, the core and the seed. So there's some learning there about the apple as well. Um, and the, the idea is it's, it's, for, it's for families. So it's not for kids, it's not for adults, it's for the, for the family. But the key um, thing is nutrition for families because i you know i know from bringing up my own children they don't always eat the good things that that, that are good for them and when you're facing uh, you know challenges of food poverty it's one thing to have the things in your hands ready to give to the children it's another thing to make them eat them sometimes but you you, you do quite a bit in terms of education and, and making the things look and feel appetizing and exciting to eat don't you no, exactly. And I think, you know, people are often more likely to try things if they've made them themselves, because there's that trust element. You've seen it, you know exactly what's gone gone into it, you know. Um, so there is a bit of a trust element there when you have made something yourself. And a bit of a, a wow factor as well, you know, wow, I've, I've done that. I've never done that before. Um, and that, you know, that sense of achievement gives people the impetus to to try something again also these are like recipes that we've tried and tested these recipes um we've had nutritionists look at these recipes so um wow. we you know it, there's not very much that can go wrong to be honest you know well, those apples apple, look fabulous where did you get them from so those apples there's a lovely story to these apples so these apples are from a sussex farm um as i said the food partnership worked with lots of different organizations we have a surplus food network where we work with lots of lovely organizations like fair share the real junk food project mm -hmm. in brighton the gleaning project um and so those apples came from the gleaning project who are a team of volunteers who will go to different farms to glean and that is to harvest the um 
harvest fruit or vegetables that are, that are remaining after a farmer has done his intentional harvests. Mm. So it works for everybody. It works for the farmer and it works for um, for the recipients of, of the gleans. So um, that's something else that we like to use in these um, bags if we're able to, is to incorporate some surplus food um, into those. So we're, we're reusing it, we're repurposing it in, an, in another way. And I think it's really nice as well to say to the recipients of these bags okay the apples aren't like super shiny like you might get them in the in the supermarket you know some of them might have a few lumps and bumps on them but they were picked three days ago by some people that we know in a lovely orchard in Sussex wow so um so there's so story really behind nice them absolutely and we will um will tell the recipients of the uh of the bags that information so that they can pass it on because again if you're used to seeing a lovely shiny apple and then you're like oh this one's got a leaf on it what's that doing on there <laughs> you know it, it and someone says you know it's okay it's okay to eat it it's, it's absolutely yeah. fine you know well we can see lots of activity going on behind you there joe and um, mm. how many people uh, you're, you're actually in the community food hub at the moment aren't you how many people mm. are involved in gathering the food Oh. creating the recipes bagging the food and then getting getting it out to people yeah so i would say that we are a very um small part of the effort across brighton so um as i mentioned before when we um temporarily closed the community kitchen um the food partnership quickly um responded to uh the anxiety I guess across the city what we were hearing from food banks and community food projects before we went into lockdown that people were like what are we going to do we're going to mm. people are going to run out of food people are getting scared what's going to happen and um, so the food partnership um, because we have the the capacity the paid members of staff and the partnerships in place we um, set up the kind of central emergency food hub um, we, we had a different location then um, and what we did was we kind of bulk purchase, bulk fundraise um, for this emergency food distribution. And then we filter the food and the resources out to community projects. So we're kind of like a central hub. Mm. So in this central hub, working with me, um, I was able to take a lot of the volunteers who were volunteering in the community kitchen um, volunteers who were furloughed or you know their their personal circumstances have changed so I think at our sort of peak activity time and this was when we were doing I don't know a thousand food parcels a, a, a week plus um, and that's in addition to all our kind of bulk food that we were sending out we had about 20 volunteers um, and at the moment, um, active in the hub, we have about 15. We also have about eight volunteer drivers. Um, that's just in our team. But I would say across the, the city, the, the volunteers go into, into hundreds. Um, so, that, that was, so, wow. Um, one of the things you talk about, actually, is in, on the, your, the uh, Brighton & Hove Food Partnership website is being part of a global movement. How does how does uh, I mean Brighton's big town? <laughs> how does it be? How, do, how is it part of the global movement in terms of getting healthy, nutritious food to people around the world? Yeah, I mean, I guess that when um, when we started in two thousand and three, there weren't very many food partnerships, mm. and now you will see that there are food partnerships cropping up in other cities and cropping up isn't actually the right word you know it's very intentional action yeah. by other cities With um, food related word <laughs> exactly yeah yeah very good good link there um and we you know we presented um a food strategy called spade to spoon um a few years ago which was kind of like a template of how food partnerships could work mm -hmm. so we have um, been approached you know over the years by lots of different uh, people who are like you know we want to set up a food partnership how do we go about it so I guess we have um, been one of the forerunners in in kind of setting up food partnerships and we've always tried to share what we know with other people so I would say that that's kind of how we've influenced people there's a lot of information on our website um, we've 
been to you know events across across the country and you know places in Europe speaking about our work um we do some work it we have had some partners in Europe where we're doing um work with so I think we've tried to share the things that we have learned along the way the things that have been our successes and some of our things are some of our challenges so I think that's um that's kind of how we've how we've done that well, we like have it. our listeners followers fans of guerrilla cricket and i think we worked out over 200 countries <laughs> around <laughs> the world so if anybody um thinks that they want to get involved or or uh, could set up uh, something similar it's not easy <laughs> mm. um, but if you wanted any help or information i've no doubt um come to us and we'll put you in touch with joe and her team who could uh, could steer you in the right direction um one question then, Joe, is as well, how do you know uh, around the area that you operate in where the help is needed? How do you know which families need help, which, where the van is going to pull up outside and deliver the recipes? Does, who, who gives you that information so you know it's going to the right people? Again, this comes down to partnership work because we are delivering, as well as the In the Bag project, we're delivering um, you know, on the day emergency food bags and bulk food to different food banks and community food hubs for their redistribution. So those um, community hubs will be working directly in the community with families through community engagement. So, for example, this morning we've sent out 130 of these mm -hmm. um, with one of our volunteer drivers to a children's centre. And the children's right. centre, they are in touch with the families. Oh, OK. So, so yeah. it's ensuring by going to the children's centre that it makes sure that it's where it's a family with children that is going to get the benefit of the, of the yeah, distribution of the food. Absolutely. And the family may be going into the, um, into that, the children's centre anyway to be collecting um, food mm -hmm. for their general you know, store cupboard, or they may be going in for advice or guidance or some other, mm -hmm. um, some other resource that they can get from yeah. the, from the children's centre. Where, where right now do you think you need the most help? I mean, clearly we're raising the money and that's vitally important because that, physically gets the food selected sourced mm. and delivered mm. um, but in sort of in terms of operations and the, the work that you're doing what, what, if there were people who happen to be listening in the Sussex area <laughs> and they wanted to oh I could do some I could help here um, mm. where do you need the most help right now mm. I mean if you're if you're if we're talking about the in the bag project um, things that are really useful that we are trying to source at the moment is for example I spoke about this um, this coloring in sheet mm. the you know of, of the apples so if there's anyone who has access to any resources, um, you know, booklets or little activities or anything that we can put into these bags, things, anything kind of food related. Like, I don't know if anyone works for a catering company, if they have access to cookie cutters mm -hmm. or, you know, any kind of baking, you know, small items that we can put into a bag. Um, that's really welcome. Um, also, we spend quite a lot of money on packaging. So we spend a lot of money on, you know, paper bags because all this stuff has to be wrapped. So likewise, if anybody works in that kind of company, um, stickers are really nice things to give away. Okay. So I think in terms of our people power, um, we are really, really lucky with our volunteers. And also we currently have to still work in a socially distanced way. So we are limited with how many people we can add to our team. Um, but volunteer drivers are also really, really welcome um, because, you know, this food needs to be moved around the city. Okay, well, uh, there is, uh, if you Google Brighton and Ho Food Partnership, not Foundation, I was getting Sussex Cricket Foundation and the food. Yeah, no, it's easy, easily done. If yeah. you Google <laughs> Brighton and Hove Food Partnership, then um, there is a very good website actually, which explains a lot about the work that you do and um, it, 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 it indeed answers some of the questions that we've been talking about. Mm. Start there. For some reason, you can't find that. Get hold of me at Gorilla Cricket, and I will make sure that uh, your interest is passed on to Joe and her team. Um, so, Joe, uh, this chat, this little 
chat you and I are having. Uh, it's going to be listened to by an awful lot of people in various places around the world, um, probably during the uh, South Africa and England series uh, coming up. So uh, what would be, uh, well, uh, and obviously our fans and followers have already been incredibly generous and uh, Got us as now. I looked this morning. It was. I went to bed last night. We were thirty percent, and this morning we were thirty-one percent of the way to our target. Yay. So, so it's been a phenomenal effort. Um, what would be your main message to our followers and listeners who have been so generous so far? What would you like to say to them? Oh, do you know what? It makes me really emotional actually, because I think you know what has got us through this so far has been people you know just the generosity of people in whether it's through like a financial donation or giving their time just the the kindness that's been shown by people during this pandemic whether it's been helping a neighbor or volunteering a food hub um i feel that's really what's kept me going a lot of time a lot of the time um so I'd say you know if people are doing that then thank you I applaud you (laughs) and you know please please keep on doing that um and and likewise this this relationship with um with Sussex Cricket Foundation and this connection that we've made with you you know connections and partnerships and help comes in many different forms and and disguises and there's lots of people out there who want to help but they don't know how Mm. and I think you know sometimes it's we've got a lovely volunteer who um who comes here called Nicola and she does a podcast called it's all about the connection Ah. and for me that's that kind of answers a lot of it. it is all about the connection so sometimes just say to someone I really really want to help I don't know how how can I help because it might not be obvious, but just by talking to people, um, often you can find what that connection is and and put your help in the right place. I mean, that's I don't that, know that that is how, be- Well, that's how we kind of got involved in a way. Uh, you mm. know, we suddenly thought, well, clearly the work that Marcus Rashford has done to raise profile mm. and, and people to understand the need – we said this is just not good enough. We need. We really want to do something to help here. We realise that, you know, as gorillas, we're nowhere near in organ- organised enough to actually get out and deliver things, let alone put food in parcels. Um, so we said, well, we need to know. Well, let's work with someone who does. And then we we knew of you, and we we, well, we knew of, of the Sussex Cricket Foundation, and we knew of the work that they'd previously done in this area. So um, hence via them to you. So you're right. It is about connections that's a, that's a terrific message so look mm. joe thank you um just a reminder for everybody uh, with over 1.7 million children in the uk estimated to live in households that uh, don't have access to sufficient food for a healthy diet our in the bag appeal can and is making a real difference um we do need more help you can go to gorillacricket.com. You'll find right on our homepage, there's the information there and a link through to the Just Giving page. Uh, you can go straight to that Just uh, Giving page. All you have to do is Google Gorillas in the bag and it will take you to uh, Just Giving. Uh, the URL will also appear um, on the screen shortly behind me. Um, so uh, it'll be the last thing you see when this little chat uh, has uh, concluded. It's also pinned to our Gorilla Cricket gorilla cricket twitter feed so if you can please help joe and her team to keep nutritious food in the bags and delivering them where they are needed thank you joe and thank you to our incredible uh, listeners around the world who have helped so much so far thank you thank you so much revolutionary commentary commentary